I am going to show you tonight how to make the jelly. Um, I've checked out my last couple of videos on here about how to make jelly and didn't really like them. I'm trying to find a spot on the kitchen counter. That means you can actually see everything I'm doing this time. Ta-da! All good. Um, right, so I need to get another thing. Right, how to make jelly. Now, I do this all the time. I do it on my sleep. Sometimes in my fluffy pyjamas, sometimes not in my fluffy pyjamas. Um, so, you need your water flavouring. You need your mixer mousse. This comes with a scoop already in it, a wee blue scoop. You need a scoop and a half of mixer mousse in for your jelly. Um, one scoop is 10 millilitres. Um, so a scoop and a half is 15 millilitres. I have a special kind of like one of the baking spoons which you can get like much cheapness. You can get a full set of them if you want to do it properly. I um, I, I know my measurements so I always stick with the same spoons at the same time pretty much. Um, so level scoop into a wee jar. It's better to mix your dry ingredients first before you make your jelly. If you put your water on top of your dry ingredients it doesn't work right. If you don't combine your dry ingredients before you put make your jelly it doesn't work right either. So you need to basically get just your level teaspoon of water flavouring. If you don't like a strong jelly don't use as much. Okay and you combine those two and just I mean this is just just an old dessert pot that I've actually just washed out but I tend to use these because I can see what I'm doing and it mixes better. So that is me. And then it's all combined. What you want is you want your mixer mousse combined properly with your water. So that you have to separate and everything's good. So this here is a jug blender. And it's just an, an ordinary jug blender. This is what I've used all the time and I find this actually really works very well. Now I keep my water in the fridge because uh, um, like that. Um, and it, it's 500 mils of ice cold water that needs to go in your... Now I've got a measure on the side of this jug blender. So I've got a wee measurement on that. You can measure it out in a jug and put it in if you don't have the measure. But I've got the measure on that and that says bang on 500. Now this comes to the noisy part. So then you put your mixture on top of your blend. And then lid on. Don't forget the lid, it's bad days if you don't put the lid back on again. And then just press go. This is going to be really noisy but... So... While that's blending, as you can see, blendy blend, um, while that's blending I'll take you for a wee walk down this way and just let you know because that'll take a couple of minutes to um, sort itself out and this is again. So today, uh, today was a good day, um, pretty much the same as usual, I had the I wasn't hungry at all and I found that I ended up having most of my products later on during the day. See my fabulous drill there. Um, so I had my soup at lunch time and then I had my coffee mousse but I didn't have that till about half past six, maybe a clock. Um, my water intake wasn't as good and I supposed to be pushing my water intake this week. I'm trying to hit the four litres um, because the more you drink it's like, it eats your weight loss um, apparently and also it stops you from being hungry. So I've had lots and lots of teas and coffees and as you can hear I'm just kind of making the jelly as I go. I've always got jelly in the fridge because it's my go-to thing during like danger zone like 3 o'clock in the afternoon you're like oh I want, I want something, I want something but it's too early for a product and too late for a product. So jelly in between times is fabulous. The golden vegetable is also fabulous. You want something to eat, you know I'm really craving like a packet of crisps or a sandwich. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, kind of take away. It really does help because if 
you're craving something savoury, then it's better. Well, it's even better to have a product than as the trying of plan. So my um, my jelly has finished, and what I'm going to try and do, I don't think I can pause a live, um, but I'll come to now continue kind of buttering on, and then I'll go back to the kitchen and I'll show you how I do it. Basically, when the jelly is um, settled, it splits into two. So you've got a froth on the top and then you've got an ice scoop off the froth. You can like make the jelly, put it into the mould as is. Um, they are just basically little plastic containers that you can actually get. Where was that? I saw them. They were doing them. It was Costco. Bookers, bookers were doing them. You can get them online. I got mine from Amazon. I just got a pair of delivered. I got like 150 delivered and that'll do me like about five years probably because I just rewash them, reuse them and um it's nice and it looks like a wee mini trifle. It makes life a little bit more exciting because sometimes when you're on plan something that's a little not a little bit a little bit different. So the more exciting you make your food, the probably the better you'll actually stick to plan. So Tuesday Tuesday, Tuesday, what is um else to do i was i went out to the shops oh that's what i was gonna say i was gonna say this is my thing today my thought of the day is about kindness now i went out around the shops yesterday and shops i don't know about you but some of the the what you call it the sales assistants can be quite nippy and they can kind of put you all and you're having a not a great day anyway that can make all the difference to be like Kind of, mm, I'm feeling all right to feeling absolutely crappy and generally feeling absolutely crappy you'll start to feel hungry or you'll be emotionally hungry for the fact that you know you're trying to comfort eat because food's nice and it makes you feel good so the better and more positive that you can feel about yourself and about your situation and all the rest of it the easier it will be to cope with um, a food environment so I was out in the Aldi yesterday um, I was by myself the weekend but I bought myself the wrong gadget so I did get it back and um, I also got um, the other two so I bought him some steak and some uh, turkey mints and things to make bolognese with later on and some turkey to make curries and things so he's all sorted so I went round to the Aldi and I went and I knew where I was going knew I was getting so I didn't sort of up and down the aisles because there's um, Christmas goodies there and I was just like mm, head down walk straight past them um, and the good thing about Aldi is that the cakes are not on display as they are in Lidl. If you go into Lidl, right, I go to Aldi's and I go to Lidl basically because it's cheap as chips. That's the reason I go. And if I need anything branded, then I'll nip across the road to my Morrison's or I'll nip down to Asta, whatever. I don't like going into Asta because it's too big. Can we? There's too many things to walk up and down. And too many, like when you're on plan, it's very hard to go shopping and not be tempted. Aldi's is perfect though because the baked goods section is not, you don't get the smells. Whereas you, you go into Lidl and they freshly bake the bread, they, they, they lay out the donuts there for you. You know they're cheap as chips. And it just, it's very, very difficult to go shopping when you have all that different temptations lying around. So, anyway, into Aldi. It was all good and I went to. Um, got all my steak and everything like that and I was going through the checkout. This is the point of the story that I'm trying to make here. So the point of the story is just me saying. Um so the point of the story basically is that um the guy who was serving me was an absolute sweetheart. He was so nice. Um a lot of people when you take things back they're quite kind of and you feel awkward taking things back because you're like that. I don't really want to do this because it causes a hassle for them and a hassle for you. But see, this guy, he was amazing. He was just so nice. He put all my stuff through. He scanned my um, my wee meter that I was taking back. He did the refund there and then. Then he said, like, okay, there's a pen and that. If you want to fill it out at your leisure and then, because you've got to do your name and address and stuff like that for it. Um, but it was just, you know, absolutely painless. And it was like, that is probably one of the best experiences I've had in Aldi's ever. And he was such a nice wee guy. So see on the wee survey things, a lot of people wait in to complain about stuff. But if I find the wee survey on the receipt, then I will write in because I remember his name. So that's fabulous. His name was James and he works in the Aldi in Paisley in Nielsen Road. So if you see him, he's a good guy. 
go to him, he'll help you. Um, and and then I went across the road because I was taking milks back from my brother. It was a big long side of the story. We don't talk about it. So I was I was taking stuff back into Morrison's. Now this is this is one of those things that I I I just don't like doing it. And when I've got to do it, it's a big kind of stress for me because I know it's difficult because I've been on the other end of it. So I know it's difficult for um the sales assistants to do it, and I know it's a bit of a hassle. And you know I don't really like making anybody feel like um annoying them so I kind of don't like taking things back which I really shouldn't I'm like that listen don't need these and um went in and the, the woman was fantastic I can't remember her name but she was lovely as well and I thought too fantastic it was great so that kind of put a positive end in my day I'd been feeling pretty decent um kind of just getting on my down quite positive and trying to start off each day quite buzzing so it was good and then I heard members and consultant and all the rest of it and meditation web chat last so I had actually a really pleasant day yesterday um talked to a whole pile of people that were fantastic and you know it was nice it was that was that was my whole point of the story is basically kindness goes a long way so see no matter how you're feeling if you're in that kind of environment try and be nice I'm guilty of it as well I work on reception, so sometimes I just want to tear the face off of people under pressure. If I'm under a pressure, it tends to rub off. And sometimes people want to chit chat, and I really can't be bothered. Most of the time, I'm actually too busy. So um, basically, just a, just a kindness, a wee bit of kindness goes a long way. And you want to know something? Sometimes it makes all the difference because those two folk yesterday they made all the difference to my day. I was actually in. A proper good mood. Eight o'clock at night, so I knew well, it would have been about half eight by the time I got home. So it was like later at night, and I, I didn't want to kind of take things back, and I didn't want, I didn't want to do it in the first place to take things back. But I thought, well, I don't need them. There's no point in having them in the house and all that kind of jazz. So that was me. I was actually pretty good pretty good for me yesterday also still buzzing from the 19 and a half pounds weight loss that i got from those first two weeks so still staying in plan still staying with the tdr um i did the soup the mousse the bar and the festive bar last night because i'm just slowly working my way through the products but i think i'm gonna have to start on the tomato soups very shortly so i'm moving away from the tdr products onto the meal replacements basically because i have four boxes of um tomato soup i think Oh, I have five boxes of tomato soup, so I have a hundred tomato soup there, which means I need to start drinking them very shortly. So we'll go back into the kitchen again. We'll turn that light out as we go. And we will see how the jelly is. Right. Right, Dokey, where are you? Okay. There we go. So you can see separated there. Now, what I do as I scoop off the top because um, it's a lot easier. You don't need to use a slotted spoon or a normal spoon and that's fine. I haven't got any jelly pots sitting out so two tucks. Right, so these are the wee jelly of Amazon and I've got a whole pile of them for like the cheapest chips. And I've only got five there. That should be enough anyway but I'm gonna Take this over to the skin, sink and scoop the top off. And you can see there's just a wee bit of froth left on that, so that's when it sets, it's fine. I fill these halfway up because I put um, orange jelly on top of these. I put like jellies and product. I must have figured out how much jellies I'm making because I might need more wee pots out, but I think it should be good. I've only got one of the one wee pot. No, I've not got enough of them, full one, so we'll just. Okay, so this is your jellies as they are. Um, I tend to set them overnight, so I'll do the next layer tomorrow. 
and yeah but you can they normally sit within four hours but you just kind of just touch them and see if they're set you know how to set a gel I'm, I'm taking it anyway an orange in the middle do the same with them the raspberry will be set and I'll set the orange up here so that's my one for tomorrow and then that that'll last me about four days depending on how hungry I am so that is me for today jelly's all good if you like the video press a wee thumbs up and if you've got any comments or questions or anything, or if you want to know how to make the jelly again, I'll try and do it again. Um, and if you like the channel, press the thing that you sub subscribe to the channel and you press the wee bell, you get notifications. But thanks very much for watching and we will see you all tomorrow and I hope you're all good.